Okay, let's talk about bones. Okay, so these are the, the um, like I said, the, the rigid, uh, sort of stiff parts that hold you up and give you shape. Bones do a couple different things. All right, so why do we have bones? All right, bones give you shape. All right, so all human beings uh, basically look the same, right? Most people, like almost, almost everybody has two arms and two legs and one head, right? Two eyes, one nose. You don't typically get um, three noses or six arms um, or an extra leg or anything, but sometimes that happens. Those are called anomalies, uh, congenital anomalies. We'll, we'll uh, maybe talk about that way in the future. But most people have the same basic shape. If you looked across the field when you're out in the forest and you see an animal moving, you could tell it was a human being by its shape, not necessarily a bear or a lion or something. So bones are on the inside and they give us a shape. Insects, their skeleton, uh, their bones are on the outside. That's why insects are kind of uh, crispy and crunchy. They have what's called an exoskeleton. Our bones all together are called our skeleton, right? Skeleton, um, and they, they give us shape. The other thing they do is help us move, right? They help us move because our muscles are attached to our bones. If I was just a skeleton, uh, I couldn't move, all right? All my bones would fall down into a pile, but it's the meat, the muscles that are attached to the skeleton that give a little bit of tension and hold us upright. So I can stand on one foot or move around or throw a ball or climb a tree, that kind of thing. So your bones are gonna help you move because they give you something for your muscles to attach to. The other thing the bones do is protect us. Okay? Bones protect us. So they're kind of like armor. Uh, your, your muscles are more like soft armor, but look, my hard bony helmet called my skull, that protects my brain inside there. My jaw protects my neck. My chest bone and my ribs protect my lungs and my heart, which we'll get to. The heart's the part that you put your hand on your chest you can feel it bump, 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 moving around inside there. That's your heart muscle squeezing blood like a pump, like a sponge. And your breastbone and your rib cage helps protect that, uh, protect that so you don't get hurt, okay? So your bones are gonna protect you. Another thing your bones do is store minerals, right? So <clears throat> a mineral is a, um, a small substance you need to be alive and there, there are things like um, calcium and magnesium and phosphorus and uh, sulfur and iron believe it or not and uh, you even have tiny 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 amounts of gold in you so you have these different types of elements and you get them mainly from your salts uh, and if the minerals are dissolved in water they're called electrolytes and they're very very important we'll get to that in, uh, toward the end we do some more physiology videos like how the body works but you have to have some place to store all these minerals you get them from your food and your water and they're in your blood but you don't use them all the time so when you're not using them calcium for instance gets stored in your bones that way when you need your calcium and calcium is very important for two main things one your nervous system or your brain works with calcium you don't have enough calcium can't work right. Too little calcium, you have problems. Too much calcium, you have problems. Um, your muscles don't work without calcium. If I want to bend my elbow and move my arm or twist it around or even pick this pen up and do little things with my muscles, pick up something heavy, I can't do that without calcium. That's a very important mineral. Um, potassium is very important. Um, sodium is very important. Magnesium, uh, they're all important. And if I don't have those minerals, or if I have too much or too little in my blood, I can't move my muscles or think with my brain. So in order to make sure we have a steady supply, when we eat these minerals, we store the extras in our bones, okay? So those are kind of the things that your bones do. And remember from another video, we said you have over 200 of them. And now we're gonna talk about, uh, in this video, what your bones do and how your skeleton is, is uh, organized. So you have really two parts to your skeleton. 
you have an axial skeleton. And I wrote it like that because it goes right down the middle. That's your, your head and your uh, torso and your backbone and your ribs, right down the middle, like an axle on a, axles and, and a wheels, like on a car. And then you have some parts that are hanging off of that skeleton, that axial skeleton, right? And those parts are your uh, arms and legs, right? Arms and legs. Actually, we'll get to that in a little bit. We'll fix it. We'll, use, we'll learn the proper terms. Right, so your upper and lower limbs, we'll call it. And at the top, your axial skeleton part of it is your head. Okay? The part that makes up your arms and legs and thighs, your, at, your um, limbs, is called your appendicular skeleton. Appendicular. Uh, because it appends appends, that's a word that means to hang from, right? So if I go and I grab this bar and I just hang here, now I'm, I'm, I'm appended to the pull-up bar. So my appendicular skeleton hangs off my axial skeleton. So my upper limbs and my lower limbs. Now we're going to learn the names of a bunch of the bones. So today we're going to start with the axial skeleton and then I'll do a different video about the appendicular or your limbs. All right, so now we know what the bones do. Part of your skeleton. Let's talk about your axial skeleton. This is the part that runs right down the middle. So if I, if I had no arms or legs, I would have just my axial skeleton. And it is made up of your head, right? I'm gonna draw a face. It's high quality um, illustration. If you get a pen and a paper, you get a little notebook while you do these, watch these anatomy videos, you can jot these down yourself. So your head is made up of three parts. Your skull, your face, and your jaw. Right? Your skull, your face, and your jaw. And you can check these out. I'll bring a skeleton, I'll, uh, I'll bring a skull uh, for another video and show you some of what it looks like without all the... Uh, uh, soft tissue on it. Soft tissue is things like skin and muscle and, and uh, organs and such. Your skull and face are made up of 22 bones and then your jaw is this part that when you talk or you chew, put your hand on your chin and cheeks and go like this, you can feel that part move around. But if you touch your face, your top part of your jaw where your upper teeth are and move your jaw, you notice this part doesn't move at all. So even when you're chewing, it feels like you're chewing up and down, but the top part never moves, just the bottom. It goes up and down, side to side, and in and out. Probably hard to see with my face rug, but uh, you get the idea. So uh, three parts that make your head. Your skull are all the bones that protect your brain. Your face is the part where your eyes and nose are and uh, your cheeks and they hold your upper top teeth. Then your jaw is the lower part that swings on hinges, so it opens and closes like a trap. Your skull has a lot of bones. They're really named for the parts of your brain. They're not too, not too difficult. We'll go into those maybe in another video. This bone right in the front, your forehead bone, is called your frontal bone. That's the frontal bone. This little bone on the side where your, the temple of your glasses sit is called the temple bone. It's easy, right? Then there's a couple others that are weird. You have a parietal bone and an occipital bone, right? You have an ethmoid bone. You have um, a sphenoid bone. Uh, so there's a ton of bones in the face and head, uh, but we're not going to get into them. Just think skull, face, and jaw. Then you've got a backbone, and you can feel this in your own back, but it runs all the way down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, you have a stack of little bones called vertebra? The vertebra. Vertebrae, if there's more, but a vertebra, which is a fun word. It just means one of those little backbones. And they're shaped like they're stacked up like a, like a stack of blocks. And they run all the way down 
from my neck, the middle of my back, all the way down to my lower back. And then they get divided into the first seven of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Those are my neck bones, right? Sometimes called cervical. Then I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Those are my thoracic bones, right, in my back. And each of my thoracic bones has a rib attached to it. You can feel your ribs. That's another bone you can actually feel or palpate. That's the word when you feel things with your hand. Each one of these has ribs attached to it. Two ribs, actually. And then these bones down here in your lower back, just above your belt, those really big blocks down there. One, two, three, four, five. I put an extra one. Those are your low back bones, and they're called lumbar bones. Okay? So you have three sections to your vertebra, or your backbone, also sometimes called your spinal bone because it houses or protects your spine. Remember, one of the jobs of bones is to protect. And your spinal cord runs through there. There are five lumbar, there are 12 thoracic, and there are seven cervical. And if you add those up, seven and five is 12, plus another 12, you get 24 total. Almost everybody has 24 total. Some people have a few extra. At the bottom, there's a triangle shaped bone, like a wedge, that's called a sacrum. This is kind of your, there's a little, a little bone down here called a coccyx, and that's your tailbone. That's when you, when you sit down, and this is where your sacrum and coccyx hold your pelvis or the big bones of your lower limb, your hips, you would call them, although that's not correct. We'll get to that. So your pelvis attaches to both sides of your sacrum so you can append or hang your lower limb to your axial skeleton. The only uh, other part you have is along your thoracic vertebra. They start in the back and then they come all the way around the front. You have these kind of round shaped bones. They're real long and thin and flat and they come all the way around and attach to a flat bone in the front. Right? That's right between the breast area of your chest. Right? It's called the breastbone or sternum. Right? So that big bone right in the front is called the sternum. And right behind your sternum is your heart. Like we talked about earlier, one of the jobs, your skeleton or your bone, is to protect uh, organs, and that protects your heart. My ribs start in the back, and they come all the way around in the side, and they attach to my sternum. Now, they're on both sides, and that makes a space for my lungs to sit in under my ribs. So you can feel your ribs on the side, and then you can feel them come all the way around the front where they attach to your sternum. Okay? Your skull, your face, your jaw, your vertebra, your backbone, which consists of seven cervical, 12 thoracic, and five lumbar, and the sacrum at the bottom with the coccyx. That's your entire axial skeleton. A couple other parts are all the ribs and the sternum. So you see, how many ribs do you think we have? Plus ribs. So you can figure this out. If you have 12 thoracic vertebra and each one has a rib on the right and the left, how many ribs do you have total? 24 ribs, right? 12 on each side. You have 12 ribs on the right, 12 ribs on the left. Occasionally you get an extra rib. And they start, the ribs are named um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. They don't have uh, special names. You just say, for instance, this rib, if I were to touch this, I would say this is my left, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, number 6 rib. And then the one right below that would be number seven. A couple of the ribs are special. Number 11 and 12 are called your floating ribs. They float because when they come all the way around from the backbone, they don't attach to your sternum. They just sort of stick out here on the side and their ends don't touch anything. So those two are called floating ribs. Or if you were... Um, 
eating ribs for dinner, you'd call them spare ribs, like just extra ribs. You can feel those if you find the edge of your rib cage and feel all the way around. You'll feel the tips of those ribs. There's number 11 and there's number 12. They're kind of on the side and you got to poke in the skin that can be a little uncomfortable or even ticklish, but those are your spare ribs back there. Number 12, number 11, because they don't reach all the way around to my sternum. All right, so that is your um, axial skeleton and some of the names. Now we've covered almost half the bones. There's uh, so many in the skull and face and jaw, and then you have seven cervical, and they're named cervical one, cervical two, cervical three, cervical four, or you can just say C4 or C7. Then when you get to the thoracics, that's T1 through 12. And the lumbar are L1 through 5. And that's how you name them. And then the ribs, there's 24 of those ribs, 24 of the vertebra, that's already 48. The sacrum and coccyx, that's 50. And then you got your jaw, 51. Your face and skull, that's another 22. So now we're up to 73 bones, plus the sternum, 74. And there's another one in there called the xiphus. Don't worry about that. So we're up to 75 out of 200. Almost half the bones are just in the axial uh, skeleton that runs right down if you didn't have any arms or legs. The next video, I'll do the appendicular skeleton and it's really just attaching a couple bones to the appendicular. You put a couple on there and you've got your arms and legs and a really weird uh, fat skeleton. Okay, so check out the next video. We'll do appendicular skeleton and then we'll move on. We'll do muscles, how they work a little bit, and then uh, we'll come back to joints a little bit, just for movement. Okay.